most gracious, the most merciful. All salutations and peace on the Prophet of Islam and his household, peace be upon them. Dear brothers and sisters, allow me to greet you in the universal greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's an honor, Mulana said, after Bhida, to be here tonight. Thank you very, very much. I must also thank my brother Abdurrahman Khan. Uh, we saw Shaheed uh, Sheikh earlier. It's the second time that I'm having iftar with him this Ramadan. But yes, it's an honor to speak on after two clerics, Nohal. And then after my sister David's address. And you're absolutely right. I think that she spoke half of what I wanted to say tonight. Because as a Christian, I think that I'm going to start there to thank my Muslim brothers and sisters for having this day of Al-Quds. We don't have it as Christians. Yeah? We don't. The fortunate part is that in the last 43 years, as Sister David's pointed out, there might have been divisions in the Muslim community about Al-Quds Day, but we didn't see it. I didn't see it. I could appreciate it for what it was. And I must thank the Muslim community for that. It's also good to see my brother, uh, Father Isaiah. We lectured together at Rhodes University. And thank the Almighty that Alul Bayt brings us back together tonight again. It was also good to meet Dr. Ahmed Ali. I'm sorry that he had to, to leave, but also convey to him our greetings and especially the role that Iran has played in South Africa, not now, the other day. Long history. Since the days of apartheid, Iran was one of the first countries to come out and to condemn, especially after the revolution. And so please convey our thanks and our gratitude to Dr. Ahmed Ali. Your brothers and sisters, I'm going to speak first about an experience, personal experience. Last year, Iftar, I celebrated with a group of young Muslim learners at South Peninsula High School. And I had one message to them. Ironically, I had to speak on Palestine as well. One message to them, and I'm going to repeat that message here tonight. It is only our firm belief in the Almighty that will make us respond to oppression. If you want to be a fighter for Palestine, if you want to fight oppression, if you want to go to that core belief which Sister David spoke about, then be a good Muslim. Be a good Muslim. Know your deen. Practice your deen. I was so happy when I came into Masjid tonight to see young people here. Yeah? Young people, appreciate this deen. Hold firm to it. Because if you don't, you are going to be sucked in by the secular society which our brothers and sisters are every single day fought and they being sucked into. As you are going to madrasa, you are seeing them standing on the streets, standing on the corners. They might even laugh at you. But know that you are committed because there is no God but God. Every single day in South Africa, and this is maybe the first reason why the memoranda are not being answered. Every day in South Africa, we must hear, oh, you people are backward, you believe in God. Yeah? It's backward to believe in God. Why are you going to mosque? This is what we must hear every single day, especially our young people. So the first fight for Palestine is the fight in your heart. The fight to put God first every single day. 
In the Christian scriptures, we have the words, if I forget you, Jerusalem, let my right hand wither and let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I forget you, Al-Quds, let my right hand wither and let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Every single day, that is what's going to make us fighters for Palestine. Because this is the crisis that Israel is facing at the moment. If we look a bit into the domestic policies of what is happening in Israel and the chaos that is happening in Israel, then it is precisely that secularism taken to its logical conclusion. So Netanyahu thinks he is above the law. He does not have to account to a court. No, because Netanyahu now thinks that he can be above God. If he treats Palestinians the way he treats them, what makes us think that he is a good and faithful Jew? He's a Zionist. He's a Zionist. This is the very contradiction that we find with Zionism. You cannot be a nationality called Judaism or Jews. No, there's no such thing. It's a religion. It has God first. So any God-fearing Jew is going to be on the side of the Palestinians. But if you are a Zionist like Netanyahu, then you are going to have the trouble like they are having in Israel today. You would have seen the protests. So this is what is happening. A Netanyahu who now has elevated himself because of Zionism above God. So, the first thing, like I say, is remain faithful to this faith of yours called Islam. A noble and glorious faith. But let me speak to you about a bit of international relations. You would have hopefully take notice of what is happening. And it's interesting, again, my sister Davids, she didn't point it out explicitly, but I thought the first thing that she spoke about when she spoke about especially the political hypocrites, the ones who went and lit up the buildings of the flag of Ukraine, lots of noise about Ukraine, about the oppression of Ukraine, prayers, even in Catholic churches, for the people of Ukraine and against Putin, and yet nothing, silence about the people of Palestine. So we have been called to condemn Russia. We have been condemned and we are saying, they are saying, oh, South African foreign policy is too, is too, too, too pro-Russia. And yet what we are doing is, we are simply saying that the foreign policy must remain independent. Nobody is going to tell us who must be our friends. When Madiba came into power, he said, oh, oh, oh. Went to the United States, he said, wait, hang on. You're not going to tell us that I must turn my back on Yasser Arafat. He stood by me. The Palestinian people in their fight for liberation stood by South African people. The same with Iran. The same with Libya. The same with Cuba. All these people. And so Madiba was clear that we will have our own and independent foreign policy. Nobody is going to tell us who our friends must be. So we are not choosing Russia, and I'm not speaking on behalf of the South African government. I'm going to criticize them in a moment. I'm not speaking on their behalf. I'm, going, I'm simply saying we must be independent and choose our own friends. We are not going to be told who must be our friends and who must not be our friends. Now South African government. You know, we have done the research when you are a colonial regime or a colonial state like Israel, you are exploitative. Which means every single person who does business with you will be exploited. So even this relationship between South Africa and Israel, the trade, is all in Israel's favor. Nearly 200%. Nearly 200%. 
There is no benefits for South Africa. The Israelis know this. Why? Because they are a colonial and exploitative regime. So they exploit. So it is absolutely right for our sister David, especially when she says, we will continue to march. Yes, we must continue to march. We must continue to raise our voices. Whether we are in government or outside of government, we must continue to fight. Because many of us, and especially the, the older ones around here, did not know that apartheid would fall. They thought apartheid would go on forever. Nobody expected what will happen. Dear brothers, this is, might, might happen with Palestine as well. So we must continue to call for the expulsion of the Israeli ambassador. He must go. Or if it's a she, I don't even know. We must make sure that we close down our office in uh, Tel Aviv, I think it is. But what we must also do, and this is very important, and this has not been coming through, and I think, again, you have the power to do that. We must become, start becoming real in our relationships with the Palestinians. What do I mean by this? If you need to import Palestinian dates, let us do that. We must give Palestinians the real material. Not only aid, aid very important, yes, but we must start putting into practice what, how we are going to support the Palestinians. The Chinese have brought the Iranians and the Saudis together, you would know. My brother Khalid, who I come with here to Alul Bayt as well, has just pointed out to me that Hamas is on their way to Saudi Arabia as well. So we are seeing the changes in the Middle East. I don't know about you, but I've been praying for that. And again, yes, it might take us another 43 years, but slowly and surely in the time of the Almighty, these things will change. And we just have to look for the right opportunity as even our own history taught us here in South Africa. There can be no peace without justice. We have seen 30 years after Oslo, it's 30 years, 30 years after Oslo, it's failed completely. Two-state solution is not viable. And so therefore we must also say to our Palestinian brothers and sisters that even what is happening in Palestine itself Attention needs to be given. There needs to be unity among Palestinian people. Unity was very important for us as we fought apartheid. In conclusion, before I sit down, I want to end off firstly by saying that one of the notes I made here, you know, if you want to know who today if you ask anybody in South Africa, did you support apartheid? You won't find anybody. Or very few people. Yeah? Nobody will tell you, yes, I supported apartheid. Even though the National Party stayed in power for 48 years, but you won't find a single person who voted for the National Party. But you know how you find them out. You just ask them, where do you stand on Palestine? You just ask them, where do you stand on Palestine? And that, is where you will f and that is where you will find out where they stood on apartheid in South Africa. I want to end off by this. One of the things that uh, I learned from Islam is this noble virtue called sabr. Beautiful, sabr. Whenever I'm struggling and I speak to Muhammad Khalid or I speak to our auntie Shamila or I speak to my other brother Hussein, he says to me, brother, sabr. Huh? Sabr. You will correct me, Khalid, afterwards if I'm, my interpretation is a bit off. But my understanding of sabr, and uh, Father Ronald might be able to tell me whether we have something similar in Christianity, maybe, for Father Isaiah's. 
But my understanding of sabr is there is peace in your heart, but you are fighting. There is contentment. There is contentment, but you are persevering. Yeah? And in our struggle, in our jihad, we continue to fight, continue to fight oppression. We continue, Sister David's, for another 43 years, maybe. We continue this fight, and I will come back to Masjid, and I will make sure that I observe al stay for the next 43 years. But dear brothers and sisters, we will continue to fight, but we will have sabr. Sabr. That contentment that only the Almighty can give. This is what we must aim for. I want to end off with a proposal first before I end off with a prayer. I want to propose, uh, Dr. Isaiah, I don't know if you know, but in this uh, mosque, uh, the platform for interfaith dialogue on ethics was launched. I, pro I want to propose, Mulana, that we must have a conference on solidarity of the Palestinian people with Abdurrahman. Let's, let's have a conference. I would like to engage with Sister Davids, for example, on some of the things, because I learned quite a bit from her tonight. Those are the kind of presentations that we need to, to, to learn about these things. Let's, let's do that. We sit down and we invite people to come and to, to attend that conference on Palestine, solidarity with Palestine, the ethical thing to do. Yeah? And we make sure that we get a lot of Christians in the room. Because like I said to my... I want to say to my sister, uh, Sister Davids, that at least Muslims have al stay, as I said. It, it hurts me as a Christian. It's not only Al-Aqsa. It's the Church of the Holy Sepulchre that is being invaded, that is being desecrated. It is Christian holy places as well. Yeah? The Christians will quote to you. Five, ten years ago, there was about 30,000 Christians living in Palestine. Today there's about 12,000. Hmm? Christians are quiet, silent. We are divided. So I think that this is, this is what we must do. I want to end off with a prayer by a Catholic Archbishop, Hilarion Capucci. He's very close to Ayatollah Khomeini. May God be pleased with him. And he prays this prayer. He was a Palestinian. Palestinian Catholic Archbishop. O oh, Almighty, it is so beautiful when one reunites and embraces a loved one after a long absence, a long torment. While the minarets recite Allahu Akbar in rhythm and synchrony, the church bells ringing joyfully, calling us to return to our beautiful Jerusalem, to our Masjid al-Aqsa, and our Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Accept this prayer from us, for it is you. You who are all hearing and all knowing, and you who have power over all things. Shukran.